Good evening and welcome to another episode of Free Media, Free Minds, uh, CTV's show where we look at issues of media freedom in South Africa. Tonight we have a very special show for you. We're going to be looking at CTV itself and its role in uh, providing media freedom and the free flow of information to you, the viewers in Cape Town. With me in the studio, I have Karen Thorne, the station manager at CTV. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. And Rachel Watson, a board member of CTV. Um, Rachel's also a leading figure of the community media movement in South Africa. Thanks for being with us this evening. Thank you and welcome. Uh, before we get into the discussion, though, we're going to look at a quick insert that's been prepared for the show. Well, I'd like the viewers to know that Community TV is not trying to um, be commercial or mainstream. We're trying to impart in their lives. We're trying to inform what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis rather than just providing stuff for them to see and look at. There's not a lot of television broadcasters casters out there who tell stories about the average man on the street, you know. So Cape Town TV, actually, we go into communities, we tell stories and we get voices heard that um, national broadcasters would not really like broadcast, you know. I think people need to know that CTV is a community television, you know. So it is for the community, by the community. So which means that for them, they should participate in what CTV is doing and they should help us in, so that CTV can grow. Uh, in terms of providing the content, in terms of um, helping us in terms of developing the programs and whatever we do best, you know. And they should be much involved because CTV is not owned by the government or by the private sector and it is owned by the people. So they should use this opportunity because what I know is that television is a powerful medium, so they should use it, they should exploit it. Uh, one of the most uh, moments that stands out uh, is the first time we went on air and the limitations that we had whereby like, we were broadcasting of uh, a little DVD, looping like the DVD and everybody was working together. And uh, although like, there's a lot of critics that were saying like uh, it is impossible, never been done before and we don't have the skills and the technical know-how of doing it and uh, being on air was actually and still a miracle for us. My most memorable moment working at CTV was the 1st of September 2008 when CTV went on air. It was 6 o'clock and we were like, uh, we didn't have like enough resources, you know. We went on air with the borrowed equipment and it was only one PC and the borrowed equipment and yeah, I remember we fiddling and it was 6 o'clock and then wow, CTV was on air. I wish that CTV would become a big national broadcaster, you know, it's so like shifting from community to, to broadcasting programming like nationwide, you know, and educating the masses like that because this organization is not controlled by government or by corporate money or anything, you know. So I would like to see this organization as Cape Town TV going national, you know, and educating like average people out there about what's happening. I think it, it's a great channel because one day I, when, I, when I was watching the there was people from Mitchell's Plain. They are living in shacks and they don't have a piece of land to live. The shacks are very small and they don't have water and electricity, toilets, things like that. So I think it's a great channel for them because they took them to Cape Town to the housing courts. So that's what I think about city. Uh, TV is not just about entertainment, it's also about information information and um, it's a tool which can change their lives and I think that their awareness of um, community TV is um, important. Well, I would like to see more like a children's channels because we have children and they want to learn more things. Well, Karen, it's an, it's an amazing story seeing your staff talking like that. The station's been around for five years, been on air for three. What have been some of the highlights for you? Goodness, for me, it's been an incredibly long journey because, in fact, the struggle for community television started already, well, in, for me, in 1992. 
um, you know, struggling just for the existence of community television as part of the broadcasting dispensation in this country. So it's really taken us something like 17 or 18 years to really fight for a space for community television. And once that space was open, to fight to keep that space open. Um, but I think, yeah, we've been on air for, for three years now and we've, we, we, we set up in actually 2006. So it's been a very long journey. Mm. So, Rachel, in South Africa, we've got three types of broadcasting, public, commercial, and community. What makes community broadcasting different? I think community broadcasting is extremely special because it's a, a medium that is important to the people of South Africa. We come from an era where the people were voiceless. And I think when community media was started by activists um, from the 70s and, and the 80s and the early 90s, the thought around was it that what we want to bring to the people is information and also very importantly, a medium where they can air their own voices um, and to share with them some stuff that governments and organizations doesn't want to share with the people. Community media is not about making money and about making big profits and about doing wonderful movies um, to the people, but it's about bringing the real issues, the social issues that the people are yeah. struggling with. And I think for me that is the main difference between commercial media and community media itself. So Karen, how has CTV been differentiating differentiating itself from the commercial and your SABC stations? What do you do differently? Mm. Yeah, I agree with uh, Rachel, but I think for me the most important differentiating factor between community television and other forms of television is that we are owned and controlled by the community that we serve and we encourage active community participation. We are not here as a professional body to produce content for the community. It's not a one-way top-down mode of communication. We are a shared communication vehicle that is owned by the citizens of Cape Town and we encourage them to use the medium to speak for themselves and to use the channel to you know, advance, uh, whether it's an NGO to take up their issues, whether it's an independent production company to produce professional content for the channel, um, even if it's government or education institutions, we encourage community TV to be used as a shared communication sure. medium. And, and what are some of the examples of opportunities where the people of Cape Town have mm. uh, used CTV to tell their own stories? Well, the thing about it is that the community itself is not a, a, a homogenous thing. Um, there are obviously many different kinds of stakeholders in the community, and they'll all have a different interest in CTV. So, for example, your, your professional independent producers see CTV as an opportunity for job creation, income generation, for professional media production. And they're an important part of, you know, they're an important stakeholder. Um, NGOs, on the other hand, or civil society organizations, organizations, there are numerous benefits for them in terms of being able to take up, use the powerful medium of television to take up their issues, whether it's dealing with HIV AIDS education or whether it's tackling important issues around service delivery, etc. Um, so it's really different strokes for different folks, as it were. Well, one of the most important shows, in my opinion, Open Studio. T yeah. Tell us about that and the concept behind it. Yeah. Open Studio is really based, I think, largely on the, uh, the American and Canadian model of public access, um, which is w a means by which anyone in the community, usually your viewers, um, have an opportunity to host their own show on CTV. And it's a very simple public access, first come, first serve opportunity where you just tell us, you know, what topic you're going to be discussing, what guests you're going to be inviting into studio, and you have an opportunity to host your own show. And we also use that platform to incubate, um, you know, and to train um, presenters who could potentially go on to host their own show on CTV. Yeah. Rachel, the, the regulator, ICASA, has a critical role to play in keeping community stations on the air and giving them licenses. Uh, uh, what have been some of the strengths that you've found when you've dealt with ICASA and what are some of the challenges for community broadcasters? I think there's, a, uh, first of all, a whole lot of weaknesses um, in terms of ICASA itself. 
what they do is they present you with a license and then they just leave you basically like that. In terms of regulations, they would, for example, community media or community radio who has been around longer than community TV. If there's a problem, it's they quick and easy to just close it down. Mm. Whereas um, from an NCRF position, I believe that there should be um, uh, more discussions and negotiations and help uh, to enable community um, TV and radio basically to, to survive. Mm. And yeah. I think that is one of the weaknesses. One of the, the, the strengths with the ICASA is if you as a broadcaster build a close relationship with um, the officials, then there is more of that um, kind of uh, interaction. Mm. And also in terms of distributing the licenses, I think there's also a big weakness um, there. Yeah. Karen, mm. it took CTV two years to get its first license and there have been a number of problems after that. Where do we stand now and what have been some of the challenges? Yeah, I mean, historically, we've had a huge amount of challenges with ICASA. Um, first of all, having to wait for a license, then having to survive on one-year licenses. And then at one stage, they told us that they were taking us off air. Um, and it's been a long struggle to get our seven-year license, which we now have, which is finally giving us, given us the regulatory certainty that we need. But I think those days are, are partially over. I mean, the struggle never ends, but I think CTV is in a very positive place right now. We do have a seven-year class license, so we're here for the long haul. Um, we are also working to ensure that we are going to be incorporated in terms of digital migration. Um, so, um, yeah, I think there are still some challenges, which I won't go into a lot of detail on. It gets incredibly technical, but um, I think our regulatory issues are to a large extent behind us at this point. So you now have a seven-year license and you're here to stay. And we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> what, can, what does that kind of security make possible, that kind of stability? Well, I think just long-term planning. Um, people take you more seriously. Um, it's easier to, to secure funding. Um, and yeah, just, just knowing that not having to spend so much time also just fighting the regulator because not having regulatory certainty also means that um, government, for example, is cautious about investing too much in the channel. Um, but I think, yeah, one of the challenges is, that is by no means over is the fact that we're still struggling with high signal distribution costs. Um, we're still basically paying the same kind of transmission costs as, as private broadcasters, which we believe is very unfair. And, and a lot of people want to watch CTV but battle to tune it in. Is there anything you can share with us about that? Is there any way we can improve that? Well, I think our, our, we've also come a long way just in terms of our, the quality of our signal. Um, Centec, in fact, about six months ago, some of the viewers may have noticed that the signal improved dramatically. And ironically, that wasn't because of CTV. That was because Centec actually replaced the transmitter. So that it became... The actual hardware. Yeah, equipment. I mean, the, when they first set up our transmitter that was built out of spare parts and that it was just giving us a particularly poor service which we were paying very dearly for. And now that we're here to stay, we've got a proper transmitter, which is giving us a much better signal. Um, but obviously, um, uh, for those people that live quite far, it's only a two kilowatt transmitter. So for most people, it, it really works to have a, a fairly decent aerial on the roof of your house pointing towards Tigerberg. Um, but generally, we're not getting as many complaints as we did before. Excellent. And how many people are watching CTV these days? Well, our numbers have grown tremendously. We're now averaging um, between 1.3 and 1.5 million um, viewers. That's on a monthly basis. So that's a monthly cumulative figure. Our weekly figures are in the region of five to 600,000. And for any given individual program, we're looking at about 100,000 as, you know, as a, a good program. Yeah. And are there particular shows that are more popular? Well, those of you that have been watching CTV this week will know that we've just launched um, Solly Philander's show, the, um, the Taxi, which has been unbelievably popular. Obviously, everybody loves um, Al Jazeera. Um, and of course, there's a firm... Let's, let's leave it there. I'm sure okay. you could go on forever <laughs> about people's favorite shows. You're watching CTV, free media, free minds. And tonight we're looking at CTV as an example of what's possible when we talk about community media, media outside of the main com commercial media. We're going to be back straight after this break.
Uh, welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. You're watching CTV, and uh, tonight we're actually discussing CTV, one of South Africa's youngest community TV stations, offering an alternative to the mainstream and the commercial. Yet we, we've heard on other shows that even community media, Rachel, even community media have come under a lot of pressure to chase advertising, and that tends to shape their content. Is, is that your experience? Absolutely. I think that is one of the biggest challenges for community media. The fact that uh, sometimes you've got to put your, your social issues behind because you've got to make money. The, as Karen mentioned earlier, uh, the community media is a structure that is owned by the, by the community. But most of the times community media is in the poor communities and um, you, you get uh, huge unemployment, you get huge rents and, and struggles, and those poor people doesn't have money to sustain community media itself. Yeah. And then um, secondly, community media, Karen mentioned the fact about Centec. Um, you've got to pay huge amounts of money uh, for... Centec is the parastatal that distributes the signal. Yes, for, yeah. for, for signal. <coughs> and, and therefore it becomes a struggle and you don't get uh, support from government, uh, the support that you do get from government are the live broadcasts that they from time to time um, advertise on community media and um, I basically have a problem with the fact that they don't use community media more than what they do commercial media because the people that they target and that do vote governments in are the people in the communities where the community media serve and I think that is uh, one of the big uh, problems. Yeah. So one of the challenges, Mark, is to get the community that owns the community media to help um, sustain um, the, the, the medium itself. Yeah. It's a big struggle and we ev will eventually get there, but yes, it's a struggle. And sometimes what you do, you've got to go to the big uh, telecom guys, uh, mm. the, uh, the big and, and, and appeal for advertising. And appeal for advertising. Because, and I mean, South Africa is one of the is the most unequal country in the world. Cape Town mm. probably the most unequal city in South Africa. CTV predominantly serving poor and working class neighbourhoods. Would you say, Carla? Oh, yeah, definitely. And is it fair to expect them to pay for the broadcast? Isn't it ironic that it's government that should be enabling media mm. diversity? That's. Yeah. Uh, taking most of your money in mm -hmm. the form of broadcast fees. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the fact is that community broadcasters are, expect to, are expected to sink or swim in this market-driven environment. And it's, it's completely at odds with our developmental mandate. You know, we want to be delivering programming that has high information, education value. And those are precisely the kinds of programs that advertisers are not interested in being involved in. They want to see you um, targeting high LSMs, which is your higher income groups. They want you to have, they're, they're interested in motoring shows, they're interested in fashion, and they're interested in entertainment. So if one is overly dependent on advertising as a source of revenue, one immediately starts becoming more commercialized mm. and that's not what we're about. So, so where would you like to see money coming from for the station? My, my um, premise has always been that, um, you know, to be realistic, I believe that community media should operate in a sort of mixed economy type of environment where we can depend on government for subsidies, for signal distribution and even donations and sponsorships for programming. Um, I don't have a problem with generating a small amount of revenue from advertising, but it shouldn't make up more than a third at the very most of your, of your revenue. And even there, we'll be targeting your smaller businesses. So we're also, in fact, creating you know, economic opportunity for smaller business. For marginalized businesses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to the government with a begging bowl, you know, saying that they must now fund these you know, enormous costs. The fact is it doesn't take us very much money to run a community TV mm. stations. We probably run CTV uh, for a whole year on what the SABC would spend on a, on a, on a party to launch, you know, their new logo. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's really not, yeah. you know, sort of numbers are not unfeasible. It, it, it's not a lot of money and it's not yeah. unreasonable to expect government to pay for people to have a basic right, exactly. which is freedom of expression and access to information. Yeah. 
Do you think the local government, the city of Cape Town, has some responsibility to fund uh, the local TV station? Oh, absolutely. I think local government has probably more responsibility than even national and provincial government because we are a local broadcaster. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't reached a point yet where we've been able to convince our own local government of the merits of using the powerful medium of CTV to enhance government communication and to facilitate you know, the two-way flow of communication between government and citizens. And that's very disappointing. Um, and it's something that we are working on and we hope to rect rectify in the year ahead. Yeah, Rachel, you've spoken about the need for more government-sponsored programs, advertisements and so on. But don't you fear that that would shape your editorial content? You would be less willing to be critical of a government when they fail to deliver basic services? Wouldn't you be more in favor of the government actually just giving a flat grant to a radio or TV station so they can enjoy their editorial freedom? Well, I think it can go both ways. That is where if you say that the structure is governed by the people, then you've got to make sure that you you choose your editorial group and the management and in particular the board structure. Um, they should be people that are secured in what their beliefs are because it's so easy for government to take over, you know. Mm. And I think they've tried that with the, I don't want to go in there, but they've tried that and At it can happen. Yes. Um, but I think government should pay for the for the programs, but I also think they should they should not charge community media um, uh, signal fees. Yeah. I think they must give it to f for free. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Karen, how is the CTV board appointed and how, how independent is it and mm -hmm. how is it community owned? Is yeah. it community controlled in fact? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think CTV has got an incredibly robust model. In fact, it's the only community TV station in South Africa that is really owned and controlled by the community through our non-profit entity. CTV is a membership-based organization and any NGO or member of civil society can become a member of CTV. And as, as members, they come together on an annual basis at the AGM and they vote for the board. Um, and obviously, I, as station manager, report to the board, which meets throughout the year. So through that mechanism, CTV can honestly say that we are directly accountable to the community. Mm at the level of governance and then at the level of programming you've got a space like open studio yeah. yes. where anyone who wants to yeah. be on air yeah. can come and, and present a program. Well we've got many other ways as, as well where we work with civil society. Um, some NGOs in fact have their own shows on CTV um, so and we also accept a huge quantity of community generated content so people are shooting programs and bringing them into the channel so there's not one approach to you know public access. Now there's a perception in some quarters that that CTV is leading the way when it comes to independent community-owned television and some yeah. of the other stations that are launching around the country mm. have in fact got very strong ties to corporations. Can you say yeah. more about that? Yeah there's something that's quite distressing to us um, I think basically what happened is that over the last three years we've seen about five different community TV stations um, receive licenses and unfortunately um, ICASA, uh, they, they, the, the, the processes which they go through to issue licenses is not particularly thorough, there's no public hearings, there doesn't seem to be any sort of due diligence. So often what happens is that people are given licenses who've never run a TV station before, don't know how to run an organization, and, and those, those stations themselves are not sustainable. So what ends up happening is that they get taken over by commercial production companies. In fact, Urban Brew, which is owned by Cajiso Media, which is listed on the stock exchange, now, to all intents and purposes, runs three of the community TV stations. And they're taking 80% of the profits, which for us is an enormous problem. In fact, we believe that that totally contradicts the, the legislation um, that governs community television. Um, so it's, it's essentially companies using community organizations yeah, to get a license fronts, basically, yeah. and then run these as commercial broadcasters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we unfortunately as CTV are the sort of last standing, um, genuinely community owned and controlled non-profit um, yeah. community TV stations. And it's not because we haven't been approached on a number of occasions by big corporates trying to take us over, but we've or the, the, yeah. the tide can go this way and you find the commercial interests coming into the sector, but the tide can also go the other way. We can promote community uh, broadcasting, radio and TV. 
Absolutely not. And, and that is precisely why I say I'm a board member of um, Cape Town TV. We are a strong um, a board of directors, principled. And one of the issues for us is that we must make sure that we remain um, a community medium that speaks on behalf of the people and give access to the people and not allow um, money and profits to, to take over that type of um, responsibility. Mm. If I can just chip in, I think it would have been much easier for CTV to have sort of forged a partnership with a, with a big company. It, we would have been able to get our hands on millions of rands of operating capital to buy lots of equipment and we would have been able to deliver a much you know, better quality service much quicker. Um, so we, we, we're paying the price for our independence, but mm. we believe that in the long term that that is the way to go. It might take us longer to really set up, sure. uh, you know, a, a, a good, you know, TV station. Yeah. Well, what, but at what, least we what know. What are some of the, the things you envision? What are some of the things you'd like to be able to provide to the people of Cape Town? Well, I think the most important thing for me is that we need more local content. Um, we, we really see ourselves as being very much located in the community in Cape Town, looking at issues that are relevant to the community here, where we're engaging with people, where we have a whole cross-section of people in our community producing content for the channel. And obviously, production requires resources. You need cameras, you need studios, you need money. Um, and um, so, so really, that's, that's, that's the core focus right now, is to be able to produce more local yeah. content. And yeah. a lot of people uh, who live in Cape Town and watch CTV would even find it difficult to come into observatory yeah. where the studio yeah. is located. Exactly. A, a plan to get journalists or recording facilities out to the people? Yeah, that's always been our long-term strategy is to make sure that we've got production centers in different parts of the community. And the way, interestingly enough, because we haven't had the money just to go and roll out, you know, satellite centers and video access centers, what we've had to do is we've had to make contact with people who are already doing things in the community. So that's actually starting to happen in a very sort of organic fashion, which I, I actually quite like because I think just by virtue of the fact that CTV is here has, has brought about this whole sort of plethora of production activity and different little production collectives coming together, NGOs are starting to make content, different community groups representing geographical communities or communities of interest. Yeah. And I quite like that model, yeah. actually. And yeah. that sounds to me like the real spirit of community yeah. media, that we can do it for ourselves. Mm -mm. You've been watching uh, CTV's Free Media, Free Minds. We're going to have to leave it there, but it's been a very interesting in insight into the channel that you all at home like to watch. It's not the SABC, it's not Mnet, it's something very Cape Tonian and it gives you an alternative view of the world. And I think that's what community TV is about. This station is going from strength to strength and is going to be around for at least another seven years, if not another 70. <laughs> thank our guests for coming in this evening. I want to thank CTV, AIDC and the Friedrich Ibert Stichtung for uh, supporting tonight's program and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.